let us get started with this um, theorem. So, in the in the last uh, module we learnt that if you have a set of vectors that are mutually orthogonal then they are linearly independent, but it is not the other way around. And using this property let us see how we can express a vector uh, in terms of its uh, coordinates using uh, an orthonormal um, set. Let V1, V2, so on till Vn be a basis <coughs> for an inner product space V. Okay, this inner product space V and let V1, V2, so on till Vn be a basis for this. So, the statement of this theorem is as follows. All of these theorems are really not very hard, they are just easy theorems. If the basis set V1, V2, so on till Vn is orthogonal. Then for any x belonging to this space V, you can write this vector x as x with V 1 take the inner product divided by the uh, the normalization value for V 1 in the direction of V 1 plus the projection of x upon V 2 divided by the inner product of V 2 with V 2 in the direction of V 2 plus so on till the, the projection of x with V n divided by the norm of V n in the direction of V n, in the, in the product in the product of V n with V n in the direction of V n right. And if um, V 1, V 2 so on till V n are orthonormal that is their norm is uh, 1. So, this inner product essentially is basically right it is the square of the length and the length is basically 1 square of the length is 1. So, therefore, uh, all of this is 1. So, basically you can write x in a simple form So, it is basically the take the projections or take the inner product of this vector x with all of these other orthonormal vectors and that gives you the scalar component and then you then take the linear combination of these uh, inner products along the direction of these individual vectors right. So, this is the theorem the proof is pretty straightforward, but I think before we proceed with the proof I think what you have to understand is a sort of an intuitive feel for this representation. Now what is happening here is, is exactly like what we thought about <coughs> in the representation of vectors right. That means we take the projection of the vector in the to the each of the bases. Uh, 
and 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 then that gives you basically the amount of the, the length that you have to consider in the direction of the basis. So, for example, if you think about 2 i plus 3 j right if you think about 2 i plus 3 j which means you know your two, 2 units in, in the i direction and 3 units in the j direction and these inner products are essentially those units in that direction. So, this is this is the basic idea and now once you think about this in terms of vectors it is probably not too difficult to imagine this in terms of functions right. So, the function an arbitrary function can be written as a linear combination of some functions and, 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 and this is basically a linear combination of these basis functions and you will figure out what is the amount of uh, you know what weightage do you give uh, it, to that particular basis right and that is basically the amount of the, the length in, in, in some measure right in, in terms of the inner product of that, that function with the basis or that vector with the basis. So, throughout this as we think about vectors we have to also think about in terms of uh, signals as well and we will see that they are linked with each other and that is the uh, that is what we will we will do. So, the proof is very straightforward very easy proof So, what we do is we write x in terms of some components that connect the basis right. So, a vector x can be written as x 1 in the direction of v 1 plus x 2 in the direction of v 2 plus so on till x n in, in the direction of v n right and this is be because uh, basis it is a basis therefore, they are linearly independent. Now, the trick is just take this vector x and look at its inner product with each of these v i right. So, x with v i is basically x i with the inner product of v i with v i right because v i with v j will just vanish off because of uh, orthogonality right. So, therefore, we can write x in this form which is sum I will say this is because of orthogonality i equals 1 to n. So, now I want to express x i using this equation that I have this is basically the inner product of x with v i inner product of v i with v i and then in the direction of v i. Now, this can be more compactly written in this form i equals 1 to n x with v i in the direction of v i if they are orthonormal that is v i dot v i is 1 and v i dot v j is basically 0 I mean of course, we assume that here and then we just normalized it. And this is pretty straightforward. So, what we have done now we have taken a vector and in terms of a orthonormal basis we have expressed this vector and we can exactly compute what the coordinates 
or or okay. So, it is pretty pretty straightforward result. I think what is very important I sometimes even wonder how Descartes imagined this ortho orthogonality orthonormality idea through this coordinate geometry. I mean you see a lot of advancement as you think very in very formal terms when you think about linear algebraic framework, but when you think about really some of these uh, uh, you know very early mathematicians uh, and this is sense of intuition is something that you should have to be able to kind of realize how to construct things. So, I mean if you were told in your fifth grade or sixth grade <laughs> that this is the reason why perhaps you have to consider the Cartesian plane you know the, the x y being mutually perpendicular right mutually perpendicular axis. So, if you were taught this theorem definitely you would find graphs very hard <laughs> to even plot a function right. But I think if uh, if you now, now you can really appreciate uh, the connections between um, orthogonality linear independence and, and then basically writing this in terms of coordinates. So, with this um, theorem we will now proceed to an important step called the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. So, what is the motivation for this uh, for this procedure? So, I am given you I am given a bunch of signals and I want an orthogonal basis to represent the signal in terms of the basis uh, basis signals or basis functions or going back I give you a bunch of vectors and I want to get a basis for to represent any vector uh, any vector in in, in, in this uh, in this uh, set right some of them could be linearly dependent some of them may not be linearly dependent but i those that are linearly dependent somehow i want to figure out to express them in terms of a basis so with this motivation we develop this notion of gram schmidt uh, orthogonalization procedure which is very useful um, um, to, to to basically construct a, an orthogonal basis for a vector space or an orthogonal basis for a signal space okay so the motivation is construction of an orthogonal basis for a vector space or possibly an orthogonal basis for a signal space. So, let us suppose we are given vectors x 1, x 2 dot 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 x n. So, here is a procedure <coughs> what we could um, do and where we could start actually towards getting an orthogonal basis for v. Let us start with this vector. Let v1 be this vector basically v x1. I will talk about normalization later on, but let us just think about orthogonality and get this intuition and then we we, we, we think about this more rigorously. So, v1 this vector is basically x1. So, I give you one vector right what is the what is the basis for that vector 
itself right there is nothing more so therefore i i can say v1 is x1 now v2 is i am given another vector from this set from this pool i pick up this vector x2 then i project x2 in the direction i i project x2 with v1 in the direction of v1 so what exactly is happening here is basically i'm removing that component of the i'm removing that component of the vector in x2 in the direction of v1 so think about this intuition i have i j k usually orthogonal if i don't if i want to get the direction of k i want to remove that in the direction of i i want to remove that in the direction of j so i basically have to remove all these pi's to get what i really want right so that is that is the very simple idea behind this this construction and let us see how this works right so then i go with v3 this is x3 minus take x3 take the inner product take x3 take the inner product of x3 with v1 and remove that component take x3 with v2 normalize it remove this in this com in, in the direction of v2 so on right and if you do this for vn you have xn minus summa i equals 1 to n minus 1 xn minus xn with vi take the inner product of x in with v i v i with v i in the direction of v i right. So, remove all the n minus 1 components in their respective directions and that is what you have right. So, the claim is the set v i i equals 1 to n forms an orthogonal basis for this vector space v and if we normalize it forms an orthonormal set right if we normalize this it forms an orthonormal set. So, I will leave this proof as an exercise. So, the idea is straightforward. I, I already gave you the idea you can try this with uh, straightforward algebraic proof to work this out uh, else try alternative methods such as induction logic to, to show that this procedure is correct. But before we sort of wrap this just get a picture of why this should work right. I mean if, say, if you just even just routinely work through the algebra take the inner product of v2 with v1 right. So, you have x2 with v1 minus this thing right and then v1 with v2 with uh, so v2 with v1 so v1 with v2 is basically uh, you know it, you, you want it to be 0 it is going to vanish there right and then uh, so so you will have v1 with uh, so v2 with v1 so this is x2 with v1 
minus this component v1 with v1. So, v1 with v1 this would cancel you will have x2 with v1, x2 with v1 and which is basically 0 right which is uh, straightforward to think through. So, I will leave this proof to you. So, the idea is as follows I give you i, j, k so on that are all mutually orthogonal if I if, if to start with. So, the idea is if I want k I have to remove i and j and if I had i and j together and I do not want i I have to remove that component in the direction of i and that exactly is the idea here right. So, um, the proof is very straightforward I will leave this as an exercise homework exercise uh, the solutions would be supplied. So, prove this claim by any of your favorite methods. <coughs> So, we will just uh, revisit an example just for the sake of a numerical exercise. So, consider the following vectors in R2 just two dimensional vectors. So, I have 3 2 is one of them. 4 1 is another. So, if you want to get an orthonormal set we just follow the Gram Schmidt orthogonalization idea. So, we basically start with v 1, v 1 is my x 1 let us do just the orthogonality and then we will normalize later right. We start with this vector which is 3 2 and v 2 is basically x 2 minus the inner product of x 2 with v 1 upon the inner product of v 1 with v 1 in the direction of v 1. So, if you just uh, work out the numerics this is vector 4 1 minus if you work out this math it just happens to be 14 upon 13 times the vector 3 2 and you can just verify that v 1 with v 2 is 0 just for the sake of it and you may land up with the basis e 1 is 1 upon root 13 times this vector 3 2 and you have a root 13 here because you have to normalize this. So, that this vector is of length this 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 e 1 is, is is normalized right. So, therefore, it is 3 square is 9, uh, 2 square is 4, 9 plus 4 is uh, 13 and that is where you have this root 13 factor and uh, e 2 is similarly uh, 1 upon this vector is 10 upon 13 and minus 15 upon 13 you just have to take the sum of the squares of these two components. Okay. So, this is basically completion of the Gram Schmidt orthogonalization procedure. So, this is a very important step because at this stage, given 
a set of vectors that are possibly linearly dependent, we can through construction come up with an orthogonal or an orthonormal basis for this collection such that any vector in this collection can be expressed in terms of this orthogonal set or this orthonormal set right and orthonormal set is very important because we can get the coordinate representation of the vector clear. So, with this uh, in mind we can start off with a signal processing exercise and uh, we are we have all the background now uh, from from our linear algebra and, and, and vector space.